In this tutorial, I am going to show you how to combine images for a longer exposure with Micro Observatory using the Image Math and Blending tools. Now, one question you might be asking yourself is, how can I get even more detail out of my Micro Observatory image? Well, an easy answer to that is, you can add multiple exposures of the same image together. Let's jump to the Select a Target page. If you choose to take an image of the Whirlpool Galaxy, which is a pretty distant object, Micro Observatory recommends that you choose the 60 second exposure time to capture the most detail. The system will warn you that the shorter exposure times, 15 seconds, 30, or 45, may result in an underexposed image. Great, so 60 seconds is the longest exposure time and collects the most detail of the Whirlpool Galaxy. But now you may be asking, what if I want even more detail? If the maximum exposure time you can request in Micro Observatory is 60 seconds, is there a way to get an exposure time of 2 minutes or 3 minutes or 4? Well, yes, but you do this during processing, and it's pretty easy. If you add different images of the same object together, this basically adds their exposure times together. Add 4 60 second exposures of the Whirlpool Galaxy together, and bingo, you'll have a single 4 minute exposure of the Whirlpool Galaxy. Okay, I'm going to head back to the JS9 4L page so I can show you. Let's go through the steps to get this 4 minute exposure of the Whirlpool Galaxy. First, I need 4 different 60 second exposures. That means 4 images of the Whirlpool Galaxy taken on 4 different nights. And what do you know? I have 4 right here on my desktop. I'll drag and drop these right into JS9. See? My list drop down and there they all are. If you want four different images of an object, either make four requests to Micro Observatory telescopes on four different days, or go to the Micro Observatory image directory and then search for four images of your target object taken on four different dates. Of course, the method I'm going to show you works if you only want to use two different images for a two minute exposure, or if you want 20 images for a 20 minute exposure. Next step, let's clean them all up by adjusting the scale, high and low brightness limits, and contrast and bias. If you aren't already familiar with these steps, I recommend you first watch the tutorial, How to Process a Fitz Image, and then come back to this video. I'm going to skip forward to the stage where all four images have already been adjusted. There! All four images have been enhanced. We won't need the Information and Controls panel for the next few steps, so I'm going to minimize it for now. Ultimately, we want to add the four enhanced images together, but before we do that, we need to line all four images up. Now, at the moment, we can only see one image, the top image, and we need to be able to see multiple images at once if we want to align them. You do this with the Blending tool. Go to the Tools dropdown and choose Blending. The blending tool will show a row for every image you have open, which is why we have four rows here. Next, read this line here. When image blending is turned on, the images you select below will be combined using your chosen blend mode and optional opacity. So first, make sure image blending is turned on by checking this box here. Next, choose how many images you want to be able to see, which is all of them. So check, 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 and check. Next, we can choose a blend mode. The default blend mode is normal, which is the one we want anyway, so leave it as is. Finally, choose an opacity for each image. We have four images and we want to see a fourth of each one, so set each opacity to 25%. There, now you can see all four images at once. Next, we want to line up all four images, which you do with the shift tool. Go to the Tools drop-down and choose Shift. You can use these arrows to shift around the active image, whichever image that is. Every time you click an arrow, it will move the active image one pixel in that direction. First, I'm going to turn a couple of these images off so that we are only lining up two images at once. And if I click on this title, it will become the active image. I'll line it up with the first image in this list. There, that's about right. 
Let's switch to the next image in the list, and we'll shift this one in line too. There, now we know the first three images are aligned. Switch to the last image in the list and get this one lined up with the rest. There, now all four images are lined up. Make sure you turn image blending back off because we don't need this feature anymore. Close image blending and close shift too. Now that all the images are lined up, we are finally ready to add all four images together, which we do with the Image Math tool. Go to the Tools dropdown and choose Image Math. The Image Math window shows us which image we are starting with, which you can see has the same name as the image we have selected in the My List dropdown. Next, choose what you are going to do to this starter image. We are going to add images to it, so choose Add in the Operator dropdown. Next, Choose what images you are going to add to this starter image. We want to add the other three images to our starter image, which we'll have to do three times, once for each image. Let's try it with the first one in the list. Select it, click Run, and there, it's been added to our starter image. Choose the next image in the list, click Run, now that one has been added too. Choose the last image in the list, click Run again. There we go, all four images have now been added together. Just remember that they have all been added to this image title, which is the first image in the My List dropdown. Go ahead and close Image Math. Okay, so all four images have been added together into one, but why is it so gray all of a sudden? Well, because we didn't just add four images together. We added the pixel values of every pixel in all four images together. So every pixel in this new image now has a pixel value that is basically four times greater than it was before. That means we have to update the low and high brightness limits to much higher values. We do this the same way we usually do. Let's open the Information and Controls panel back up. First, find the lowest pixel value for the dark sky background. If you like, you can even pull out the pixel table from the Tools dropdown. The pixel table will show you the pixel values for all the pixels around your cursor. The one in the very center of the table shows the pixel value where your cursor is. Looks like the lowest pixel value is around 145 or 146. I'll use 146. Next, let's update the high brightness limit. It's important to note that even though these sliders don't travel any higher than the pixel value of 4095, you can just type any value you want directly into this text box, even if it's higher than 4095. From experience, I know that I like how this looks when it's set at around 8000 so I'm going to put that in. But you can change this value as you like to whatever you think looks best for the image. There! We now have an image of the Whirlpool Galaxy that combines the 60 second exposures of four different images. That means that the image we now have is equivalent to a four minute exposure of the Whirlpool Galaxy. This should give us an image that shows more detail than a one minute exposure. Let's save this image as a JPEG and compare it to a one minute exposure of the same object. Look at that! Our 4 minute exposure is showing more subtle detail in the galaxy than our 1 minute exposure was able to capture. And if you would like even better definition, you can consider removing dark image noise from each image first, which you can learn to do by watching the tutorial How to Remove Noise with a Dark Image.